Joining us now is Ojinika Ojio Kwe with stories trending around the world. Mm. Hello, Jinix. <laughs> Dr. How was your weekend? It was fantastic. How was yours? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that smile. Good morning, Aya. Good How morning, Ojinika. Good morning, Rufai. My weekend was so much food. <laughs> so much food, so much fun. That was a great interview so you guys much, had with uh, so Peter Obi earlier. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, two diplomats who monitor the Nigerian presidential and National Assembly elections, Ambassador Mark Green and Johnny Carson, in a joint treatise over the weekend, criticized the conduct of the elections, stating that even Nigerian citizens who supported the winners of the elections were disappointed with the electoral process while insisting that critical lessons must be learned from the shortcomings of the exercise by Nigerians and Africans with a view to forestalling such falls in the future. In the United Kingdom, Nigeria's former Deputy Senate President, Ike Ikwerimadu, who is facing charges over alleged organ harvesting, revealed during cross-examination in court that he opted for a non-family kidney donor for his daughter, Sonia Ikwerimadu, following advice from a medical doctor, Diwe Ikwerimadu, who happens to be his brother, the ex-senator, and his wife, Beatrice, are also facing charges bordering on conspiracy to arrange and facilitate the travel of a 21-year-old man with the intention of harvesting his organs. In Nigeria, 53 out of 102 people who survived a tragic train bus accident on March 9 in the Ikeja area of Lagos State were discharged from different hospitals over the weekend. The incident claimed six lives after the train collided with a Lagos State staff bus conveying workers. Witnesses at the scene said the bus was attempting to cross the rail track when the train rammed into it. 43 people are still receiving treatment. The driver of the bus has blamed the incident on mechanical faults. And the Oscar goes to everything, everywhere. Finally, on our entertainment, the metaphysical multiverse comedy, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, got Hollywood's top prize on Sunday, winning Best Picture at the 95th Academy Awards. 60-year-old Malaysian-born Michelle Yeoh won Best Actress for her performance in the groundbreaking comedy, making her the first Asian woman to win the honor, while Best Actor went to Brandon Fraser, culminating the former action star's return to center stage for his physical transformation as a 600-pound reclusive professor in the well. My goodness, um, I thank the Academy for this honor and for our studio A24 for making such a bold film. Then, Rihanna performed her Oscar-nominated song, Lift Me Up, from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, during the ceremony on Sunday, the track which was her first single in six years, was nominated for Best Original Song, co-written by Afrobeat star Thames, who was also nominated for her collaboration in the hit song. Thames stunned the champagne carpet in an incredible outfit by Neveu Couture in what was meant to be a history-making moment for the 27-year-old star. She, however, lost the Oscar nomination for Best Original Song to Natu Natu from the film Triple R, which made history by becoming the first Indian film song to win an Oscar. I feel incredibly blessed. I'm so grateful. I'm so excited for the future. It's just motivating me to keep going. I want to start off with you, Ayo, on um, Temila Day Openi's garment. I mean, she lost the yeah, she lost the um, Oscars for best original song. Like I said in my headline to um, Natu Natu um, for the film R R R. Uh, what do you make of her outfit? So I think even beyond the outcome of the Oscars, you know, her not winning the Oscars was her outfit that made headlines. 
and you know sometimes they say good or bad publicity at least you're trending she was mm -hmm. definitely trending you know yesterday into this morning she wore i wish do we have the picture of the outfit she yes, wore we'll that looked like it. a cloud yes. and around her head and what people just said was that she was insensitive to the people behind her because they could they didn't have a good express um, experience of the oscar as they had to be leaning to see what was happening on stage but this is who we are as nigerians we are flamboyant have you seen our head headgears and this in our gaily so you know can, can we cut her some slack yes. it's her first time at the oscars i mean i'm sure that her stylist knew better but i think they just wanted to make a statement but, but i want to say i thought she represented us well yes but because uh, yes. you know uh, if uh, if uh, lift me up had won she yes. would also have won the oscar yes and in any case the the part of the beauty of the oscars is about the fashion yeah. And the white ensemble was all over the place. So, Dr. From Abati, Halle let Berry me tell you the issue. To Anna de Hamas, yes. to, uh, to Emily Blunt, yeah. to Thames, all of them decked out <laughs> in uh, white. How will she know? How will you have uh, remembered that she's Nigerian? If she didn't go there with a skyscraper yes, right. of an attire uh -uh. that stood out and was one of the most elegant spectacles she really was. at the Oscars. She really was. So the thing is that the people that were sitting behind her will have that picture of very they soon. Those they should have used binoculars. should have used binoculars, but they were like, going see the issue in Nigeria. We can't be but so selfish. No one can I do those people. Time. Congratulations to all the winners. I am particularly excited um, about yeah. Michelle Yeoh as well as Brandon Fraser, who I thought gave an amazing performance, a performance of a lifetime. Well, the Oscars is over now. We look forward to another one, hopefully without a slap. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. And Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes. yes. Best supporting Best actress. Supporting actress contrary to, to everybody giving it to Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. Uh, yes. The next time they don't pick Angela Bassett, I will boycott the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, let's continue what's trending with reactions trailing comments made by the governor of River State, who over the weekend described the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, as the hero of the February 25th presidential election. Wiki made the comment during an interactive session with some trade associations in Port Harcourt, the state capital. The governor went on to state that if Peter Obi had not contested the election, the North would have retained presidential power. Let's take a listen before we take some reactions. The hero of this election, whether you like him or not like him, is Obi. The hero of this election is who? Obi. Listen, listen. I'm not saying it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not saying it to make you happy. Listen, are they hear me? I'm not saying it to make you happy. I'm saying the truth and nothing but the truth. He may not have been pronounced as a winner, no problem. The law will take its uh, course. If Obi did not run this election, the power wouldn't have come to the south. I can tell you the truth. Whether you wish tomorrow or not, is immaterial. But history will be on his side that he fought and fought well. Rufa, I believe you guys discussed this with Peter Obi, but I'd like to share reactions. You know, that was uh, trending over the weekend. This is from Chijoke, who wrote, Your hero, yet you denied him pass to your state. Your hero, yet you allowed your slaves, whom you call boys, to intimidate voters. Your hero, yet you sold his votes to someone who isn't fit. Your hero, yet you disappointed him. Your hero, you oppressed his supporters. Well, Otumba wrote, politically, he is correct. If Peter Obi didn't contest, Atiku would have won, and power will remain in the north. Peter Obi took votes from the southeast and south-south, the stronghold of the PDP, and even Nasarawa and Play 2 State in North Central. But Wike messed up by giving us the impression that he'll support Peter Obi initially. Well, Baron wrote, Anyone who understands politics knows that Peter Obi aided Tinubu's victory immensely. Atiku's PDP would have defeated Tinubu's APC flawless if it were a two-horse race between Atiku and Tinubu. Peter Obi's Labour Party wiped out virtually all the southern bloc votes of the PDP. Refai, your comment really quickly. I mean, I don't know how people analyze politics and they keep playing this game. If it was a two-horse race, this one would have defeated somebody. No, please. I think we, we, we think so much in the past, like the old Nigeria. The new Nigeria says that 
a little unknown man that a lot of people say had no structure came and changed the political landscape in his first election, got 34 seats, got six senators, and is beginning to build a structure, harnessing structures with other people in other states. So I don't get this kind of thinking a lot of people are saying. That, oh, if it was a two-house race, it would be this or that. No. People that talk like this forget that the political landscape of Nigeria has changed. And it's about competence now. These same people were those that shouted that, oh, they don't even think Peter B was going to win two states. You remember how they said he had no structure. So the question is, what changed? So why are they talking now? All of a sudden, why is Mr. Wiki saying, oh, Peter B is the hero? <laughs> and he's so much the hero that we saw what happened in River State and the yes. results are still being contested. Yes, and, I, and you are right I, for raising that up, Rufai. I'm think, sorry. I, I wanted to also just raise that particular subject yes. up because over the weekend there was a video that was trending. I believe I shared it with yeah. all of you. Yeah. If you guys can pull up that video of a gentleman who went through the IREV, which I also did, uh, the video of uh, the IREV, where the po results from Sokoto were updated into polling units in River State. I mean, that's I mean what thing. is happening here So that's Nigeria. the shocking thing. And you're saying that vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, a situation that changed, that we even had irregularities with even the presidential election that they were not updated on time. Yeah. I think people should stop living in the past. If for anything, this election has shown that Nigerians know what they want. And a people that have woken up that knows what they want... They are harder to suppress any longer. <laughs> and you're going to see the same pattern Absolutely. if rigging doesn't happen in this governorship election. I because the not. people know what they want. And I hope Heineck, before they say I'm the man that saw tomorrow, I hope Heineck has fixed all their logistical problems. I hope Heineck will not give us problems as regards IREV. I hope we will not have compromised EOs. This is I it. hope we will not have compromised REC. I hope we will not, they will not take polling uh, boxes again. Like we saw. Like we saw in the last... I hope Absolutely. so. Well, so that's the sad reality we're seeing. Absolutely. So they, they should wake up as much as Obi, Obi did make a good show in fair and square. Political landscape has changed. And it's not really about Obi. It's who can appeal to the Nigerian people. That's right. just it. All right. Well, you know, over the weekend, a video where the River State governor took a jab at the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atikwa Bubaka, and the aggrieved members of the PDP went viral. In the video, Wike stated that while they were protesting at the INEC office, his friends were drinking 40-year-old whiskey and watching them on television. Let's take a look before I come to you, Dr. Vati Anayo. What is in us is greater than what is in them. As I put us in, I just said that I took one well, forty years whiskey. I called some of my friends as a resident. Don't ask them. Oh, forty years. And then I put the revision. See how you read the matter. Oh, you are saying they have become a, a labor union. <laughs> they have become a students union. Oh, we are saying. You are saying what? What would I say? You have, you have taken over the role of student senior. Aluta continue. <laughs> that is what the party has come. Aluta continue. When the plot finish, come down and implement it here. Nobody to talk again. Come. As entertaining as this is, Dr. Mati, a lot of people, even I believe Atiku Abubakar has said that Wike should take it easy on the drinking before he comes out in public to speak. Dr. Bati. Well, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether you are playing into the hands of uh, Governor Wike. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, only last week he was saying that Arise TV I is, saw a, that. is a political party. Yeah. And that every day they are discussing Wike. <laughs> so I wanted yeah. to show you. <laughs> and our political party does not win. <laughs> election at the polling unit. So oh, you are goodness. making us fair game for Wiki to attack again. But to the issues. Now, the PDP has already responded very robustly through Frank Shaibo to Governor Wiki, boasting that while uh, Atuku Abubakar and Co were doing the uh, Aluta Continua like students' union is, <laughs> he was drinking whiskey. 
40 uh, year old whiskey. That's very that's expensive. That, not that bottle of whiskey, when that bottle of whiskey was made, mm. I guess whiskey must have been in secondary school. <laughs> So this is the kind of indulgence, Very expensive. you know, that people get when they are in, in power. And Frank Scheibel's uh, statement, I think, says it all. Because he was saying, the rule is, when you drink, don't drive. That the man who is driving River State is uh, already drinking from 11.30 a.m. when people should be serious at work. You know, well, I don't want to quote uh, what Frank Scheibel has written, but I think it's a very, very robust uh, you know, commentary on, uh, in fact, he was even advising uh, Governor Wiki that he should learn to be as sober as a judge. <laughs> After all, he's married to a judge. So why doesn't he, you know, learn sobriety <laughs> and all of that? So, well, but that's, that's political talk between them. The second thing, he says Peter B is his hero. Well, he's entitled to make his own choice, to characterize those that he admires the way he admires them. However, the only clause to put there is that oftentimes in politics, people frame personal interests as national interest. We all know where Governor Wiki is coming from with regard to Southern presidency and his problem with the PDP when he lost the primaries. And now he's trying to put all of that to use uh, uh, P2B to make his uh, own case. Is he fighting for his own personal interest or is making a case for national interest. That's where the question is. Absolutely. But he says that uh, every day, <laughs> we are always discussing him. So, Unfortunately. Just for your information. Oh, I saw that, doctor, but I did. <laughs> you, if you trend, you'll appear that means he's on watching. what's trending. Absolutely. Well, let's take our final story. Ahead of the gubernatorial election taking place on March 18th, a video now making the rounds on social media shows where a school teacher was encouraging her pupils to canvass for votes for the incumbent Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songwulu. And in Odobuya Junior Grammar School, we are voting for Sawalu! We are voting for Sawalu! To you. Do you know what, very um, quickly, this is an abuse of power, an abuse of authority. This is absolutely, you know, condemnable. And you know, the thing about this, OJ, is that we keep seeing these videos, videos like this, with the faces in full view. In fact, she mentioned the name of the school. There's no doubt as to who this woman is. But the big question is, will there be consequences? We saw that with the Surulere incident. We've seen that with a number of incidents during this election period, no consequence. So it will happen that they will keep on doing these things and abusing the power during this election period. Very sad. Another outrage was also the state of the school there. It was that. Completely appalling to see <laughs> that students go to school like that in Lagos. Well, unfortunately, I don't Thank know if you, you want to quickly say Nika. something, well, Dr. We Bati, seem to have run out of time. Yeah. But she's right. Yeah. Children should not be dragged into politics. Yes. Okay. It's an abuse of privilege. Mm -hmm. It's an abuse of the education system. Mm -hmm. The same state that is not paying more attention to details yes. is trying to use children for politics. Well said. Well, thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on uh, What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.